Hi, my name's Concerta, and this video is going to be part three of Am I Lukewarm? I think that's the name. <laughs> I want to go back and, and I check these videos, and sometimes I'll watch a little bit of them, and I realize sometimes I change the names and or I forget what I named it, so please forgive me. I'm sorry about that. Um, but this is the third video and I'm not trying to get on anybody about being lukewarm because usually when we are, we don't realize we are, you know, and I'm not, um, here to pound you down. I'm just here because, you know, some scriptures really came to my mind today and I didn't realize how important they were about whether we're lukewarm or not as Christians. And um, I just think the day and age that we're living in right now, that we can't be lukewarm Christians, even if it's never a good idea, but it just seems like things are progressing faster and we're definitely in the end times. And um, I just think we should really be, um, have our lamps full of oil. Oh my gosh, that's good. I wish I had that scripture about the 10 virgins. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to the best of my ability. But um, this is just so that we can kind of keep an eye on ourselves and make sure we do not become casual Christians or lukewarm Christians. And if we are, that we want to just step it up. And that's for all of us. It's me too. I'm, I'm talking right to myself as well, you know. Um, and the reason is the scripture I want to read is, uh, we've been talking about this, was Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Just going to repeat it real quick. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father. So even if you stop and think about that, you know, sometimes, did you ever read a scripture and certain parts of the scripture stand out? The whole scripture is good, but at, at different times when you read it or different seasons in your life, you see something differently. Or I guess you could say God gave you revelation in another area about that scripture. Um, and it's like, it, it says that does the will of my father. What is the will of the Father. Well, we know the will of the Father is what the Bible says. Are we obeying what the Bible says? That is the will of the Father. So we, I don't, I'll tell you what, my biggest thing right now is I don't want anybody to go to hell. I, I just don't. I just think that, you know, God, God promises with long life he will satisfy us and show us his salvation, but not everybody lives, you could say, a long life in years. And um, <clears throat> and that there's you know reasons for that as well, uh, why some people don't. And I do have down to hopefully do a video on that because people need to hear that as well, more, more as a comfort um, about why some are taken early, um, or die early. Um, but anyway, um, the other scripture was being lukewarm. Um, Proverbs chapter three, verse 15 and 16 says, I know your deeds you are neither hot nor cold, but because you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth or spit you out, spoo you out. Depends on what translation you're reading. And I'm thinking, I, I found another scripture too that came to my mind. It said, um, I know this sounds really doom and gloom, but I don't want it to be that way. I mean, I don't want you questioning your salvation unless you question it because of, you know, some conviction you're having. That's between you and the Holy Spirit. If the Lord is convicting you, then that's a good thing. And that's what keeps us on guard. But condemnation is not God. 
okay? And if you're not in any kind of sin that you know, because I said in my last video, when I was really sick, um, something happened where it was like I questioned my salvation and I wasn't even doing anything that I knew of. Um, and, and it was definitely, that was an attack from the, from the devil, you know, because like I said, I, there wasn't anything I could even think of or knew of or anything. So that really would scare you. And I thought, then I realized I was like, that can't be God, you know, there's, there's, there's a difference between conviction Conviction is good if it leads you closer to the Lord. It helps us to know that the God is right there on us, you know, helping us to stay on that straight and narrow path that follows our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There's like a, a scripture that says, I, you know, I don't want to go to the I don't want to go to the right or to the left, but I want to walk that straight and narrow path that falls, follows my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the path we want to be on. And this scripture kind of goes with this. Um, it's Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Enter by the narrow gate for wide. Listen to this. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Hmm. That's kind of scary. But you know what? If you're living for the Lord, and you're seeking His face every day, and, and you really want to live for Him, and you care for Him and love Him so much, and you're so repetitive if you do anything wrong, I don't think you have to worry about that. It, um, because all it's as simple as just asking the Lord, Lord, you know, am I doing anything that would keep me out of heaven? If I am, show me. I'm serious. He'll tell you. He really will. You know, but make sure you, you take that time every day to spend in that quiet time, in that alone time with the Lord. You know, so that he can take the time, shut off some stuff, shut off everything. You know, hearing from the Lord is worth it. Developing that close relationship with the Lord is worth it. You know, and sometimes we have to get rid of some other things. You know, we have to prioritize, and God's supposed to be first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto us. So is he first place in your life? If you've walked away, come back. It's time to return to your first love. You know, we, we want to be on that narrow way. We do. You know, um, but it says, and difficult is the way that leads to life. So in other words, you know, God's ways aren't always going to be easy. You know, our flesh living here in this world, we want to go. We want to do what everybody else wants to do. Unless your spirit man is stronger. You know, this whole thing that I'm trying to, to stress here about being a lukewarm Christian, or I did a video a couple back about um, the mark of a carnal Christian. You know, you want to serve God. I want to have quiet time with Him. At first, it may seem like it's a chore. I'm doing it because I feel like I have to. But I'll tell you what, if it creates a habit in you, it's a good one. You know? <laughs> I, like even with my kids when they were younger, I used to make them go away and have quiet time. Everybody's having quiet time right now. Go read your Bible, pray, worship. This is something you have to do every day. Now, did everybody always like doing it? Um, I don't know. It was more for just, this is what we do as a Christian. Just trying to create a habit in them that this is part of being a Christian. And you know what's something? 
it's like now it's like my favorite part of the day it really is I love it you know um, the closer you get to God you realize how sweet that is the Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good and when you get that taste and you get in his presence there's nothing you'd rather do than be with him you know, you kind of be like, darn, I wish I didn't have to go to work. And I wish I didn't have to go out and pick the weeds in the garden. I wish I didn't have to, you know, go fix the car. I mean, of course, we have to do those things, right? But I tell you what, all that other stuff, you know, you definitely want to be with God better than going to some function, a party, or, or um, watching that movie or anything. It's just like, it's. Oh, it's so good. I mean, once you taste how good it is, I guess it would be like anything else you taste and it's so good. You want more, you know? It's it's like if it's this good and the more you spend time with them, it gets better. And then the more time you spend with them, it gets better. You can, before you know it, the hours go away. And, oh, it's so wonderful. But, um... So at first it may seem mechanical or I remember the first time I started doing it um, even after being a Christian for a while which is kind of taking notice of other people's lives and those that were like on fire for God and stuff like that and I'm like you know what do you do how do you get that way you know because you know you always love the Lord and you know just you do and you want to do church stuff or whatever but you know, to see somebody so in love with God and so on fire. And so I started spending, I, I gave it an hour every day. I'd go for a walk and, you know, I'm like, okay, here I am, <laughs> Lord. Uh, you know, I, I, I started talking and then I'd start praying about, well, you know, I just wanted to pray about this and that. And, oh, and then I'd think of somebody to pray for. You know, it was something because before I knew it, it just became the time got longer and longer and longer. And I had so many more things to say and so many more things I wanted to talk to him about. And it was just like, then you get to start seeing him answering your prayers and then even talking back to you. And like, whoa, this is kind of good. <laughs> you know, and it's like that hour just becomes that before it was kind of like awkward. You know, um, here I am, um, you know, trying to think of what you're going to talk about. And then you, after as time goes by, you're thinking, how did I not do this before? Because it's like a, the great transfer, you know, it's like you give him all your sorrows and all your hurts and all your uh, questions and all your frustrations and you give it all to him because you're, you're talking to him about it and you're, you know, I'm saying it's going up in like prayer or talking or however you do it. And uh, it's like it it's like it just gets off of your chest. And I'm thinking, how in the world did we live with all that stuff going on inside of us? You know, and you wonder why people get stressed out and anxious and and worried and all that kind of stuff. You know, you're carrying so much. And, you know, God wants us to give it to him. The Bible says in First uh, Peter 5, 7, to cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. And it's great to talk and get it off your chest. I mean, hey, who better to talk to for counseling than the Lord? You know, if anybody's got any answers, it's him. He made us and he made the whole world and he knows everything that's going on and everything that will go on. You know, he knows us better than we know ourselves. So... Oh, what a sweet time that is. So develop that if you haven't already. And uh, it's so good. So that's one of the ways, you know, that we can make sure that we um, stay close to the Lord so that we're not lukewarm, we're not carnal, we're not casual, whatever you want to call it. Um, stay in that close relationship with Him. I want to go through a couple more things that I didn't say. Um, again, it wasn't to try to pinpoint people's certain sins or anything but they're just kind of common things that we deal with I have one here about um, you know gambling 
these are just things I think, and if you watch the other videos, I mentioned other things that we talked about, tongues, tithing, divorce, fornication, uh, murder. The last one um, was that, is was gossip. Um, you know, not talking about people. You know, the Bible says, you know, do not cause discord among the brethren. You know, don't try to dirty somebody's name. Don't do it. I tell you, some of the greatest men and women of God that I've ever known, or you would never hear them speak a word against another human being. No matter what those people did to them, they would never speak against them. So that right there is, a, is something to take notice of, you know, keep your mouth, you know. Um, the Bible says our tongue is set on fire by hell itself. So let's make sure that the things that are coming out of us, you know, even the Bible says it's not what we eat or drink that defiles us, but what comes out of our mouth. So speak a life. Not over, not only over yourself, but over other people. Even if they're, they haven't been, you know, so good. Always be speaking life. Um, so for gambling, I don't. This is on here. It just says, um, you know, that has to do with like coveting. I think because, I this I think maybe a little bit at least because um, the Bible says. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, if anyone isn't willing to work, he should not eat. So there's so much that goes on with entitlement attitudes, people that want something for nothing, or they think because someone else is rich, you know, they're actually like mad at them, not realizing that, you know, they had to work their way up to get there. Or even if it was passed down from their parents, their parents had to, and they did it on purpose to be able to give it to their children. You could do the same thing if you want to. You know, don't be jealous of what other people have. That's what that whole covetousness is, because that could lead to um, not good things, okay? You know, you know, people want things without working for them, you know, and... You know, even if people think, well, you know, I'll just live off the government or it's all free. Well, nothing is for free. Somebody's working for it. And, you know, you you want it to, if they're going to do that, go to people that really need it. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't want to, you know, you know what's in your heart. You know, God says you don't work, you don't eat. It's important for many reasons. You know, you get a lot of satisfaction and self-fulfillment and just knowing, you know, I worked a good hard day, I earned this. And then you do become more appreciative too when you have to work for something, you know. You have that, you know, attitude of gratitude. Um, and even Proverbs chapter 13 verse 11 says, Wealth gotten by vanity shall be dis diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase so there's a lot of those questions people are wondering you know the lottery or can i do betting on i don't know horses or whatever people do um you know gambling just just gambling in general just to try to get something for nothing you know there's places that do this but you have to understand they wouldn't be in business unless they were winning more than you were because if you were, they wouldn't be in business. So, you know, think about, <laughs> keep losing my ring here. Um, keep, you know, think about that, you know. Um, because, you know, you see so many people putting so much money into these things. And I don't know, there's other ways to that's what I that's what I get here from these scriptures you know um, it, it clearly talks about working to gain um, that's how you'll get increase one of the ways I mean there's there's other ways you know um, adultery that I'll probably talk about when I do, I'm doing a series on divorce. I didn't really touch on the divorce one in what I've been doing as far as being a um, lukewarm 
being lukewarm. Adulteries, you know, that's the seventh commandment. I mean, I think we all know not to sleep with somebody that's not your husband or wife, right? Okay. Um, or, you know, definitely if you're not married, then, and remember, marriage is between a man and a woman according to the Bible. And that's what marriage is. And it's a real man and woman, not somebody, you can't pretend to be something and it mean that you actually are. Remember, you know, the government, as time goes on, the government is going to make laws that are going to go along with, um, I was going to say the far fall of nature, but the na nature is falling faster every year. It seems like, oh, now you can do this. Before you weren't allowed to drink, now you can drink. You weren't allowed to smoke marijuana, now you're allowed to smoke marijuana. You weren't allowed to have uh, have abortion, now you can have abortion. You weren't allowed to um, uh, have marriage except for between a, a man and a woman. And, and they're changing the laws of God. See, we have to, how do we know? It just depends on who's in government. You know, it's like if you got one person in there, they're going to say, no, you can't do this. It's not lawful. It's not right. Then you get somebody else and they're going to say it is. So what are we going to change every other year? Every so, or I mean, every so many years, you know, depending on who gets in office. No, we have to go back to the beginning. In the beginning was the word. That's in John. First chapter, first verse, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. God is the Word. And so, in all of our lives, I don't care what religion, though I do believe the Bible does say you must be born again, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He did die for you. He did raise again from the dead for you. Everything revolves around God. So we have to go back to the rule book. You can't change the rules. That's when things start getting messed up. And now people are getting confused. They don't even know what they are. There's people thinking they're frogs and there's people thinking they're dogs. I mean, it's just... Um, there was a girl on there the other day said she wanted to be pronouns of demons. Like, this is how you address in proper pronouns a demon. And and it, it, and she was saying that she was one. And, it, you know, it's just gotten so out of hand, you know. Uh, that P, It's just, we got to go back to the beginning. Go back to the rule book, you know. You know, who are we? You want to know who you are? Read the Bible. You are the beloved. You are accepted in the beloved. You are a child of God if you ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. And if, you know, he, Father God is your father. And if he is your father, then Jesus Christ is the Son, and Jesus Christ is our mediator. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one cometh unto the Father but through him. He shed his blood for you. Because the Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins, and sin separates you from God. We have to have that, and Jesus paid the price for us, a price we could not pay. He paid it for us so we could go to heaven. And live with him forever. That's so awesome. Just the thought of it. Just to think about it. Wow. And some of us have loved ones that have already gone there. And you're going to get to be with them too. You know. You will. Absolutely. That's a nice thought. So. And then the next one. Um. Now, these are addictions, okay? And I'm going to put two of these things in one because I see I'm already, <laughs> the time goes by so quickly. Uh, porn addictions, but this could be anything. Drugs, people have sex addictions, alcohol, marijuana, cigarettes, if you want to 
put that in there, whatever, whatever you're addicted to. Um, people have like these OCD things that they're addicted to things they can't stop doing. Um, and uh, generational curses. Things like that, um, th like even even some sicknesses can be generational curses. If you see something that everybody in your family has had and it's been passed down, you know, you're going to see that. Um, sometimes people need deliverances, you know. Uh, so let me just say, um, you know, God says in Psalm, Chapter 101, verse 3, I will set no worthless thing, some translations say evil thing, before my eyes. I hate the practice of them who fall away from the right path. It shall not fasten its grip on me or cling to me. Um, and it does, you know, it does say... Um, about it says you exodus chapter 20 verse 5 you shall not bow down to them or worship them for i the lord your god am a jealous god punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation that hate me so remember that um of those that hate him okay this is something, I'll be honest with you, um, I'm learning myself. Um, this is, uh, it says, the Lord is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving the iniquity and transgressions, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, Onto the third and fourth generation. But remember what it says. In other words, you know, don't think there's a lot of stuff going on out there. A lot. You know, there's just, I don't even want to say some of the bad things. Um, all kinds of trafficking. And, and, you know, you wonder, because I've heard people say, well, why does God, you know, allow this and that? Well, you know, look what the people are doing or even some of that stuff could be passed down, you know, or they're worshiping idol or sacrificing and doing all kinds of things. And, you know, you have to stop and think sometimes that those people are doing really, really bad things, you know, because, but all you see is the bad things that are happening to them. Well, do you want them to do all these horrible, awful, terrible things to innocent victims and nothing happened? You know, it, it's, what do you, you know, I, there's rewards for good behavior. There's um, trouble for bad behavior. You know, you're, you got to... Um, watch your, what you do and your choices. You know what I'm saying? But let me just say this right now. Um, and they talk about generational curses as, you know, a generational curse describes a cumulative effect on a person of things that their ancestors did, believed, or practiced in the past and a consequence of ancestors' actions, belief, and sins passed down. Um, but I also want to read these scriptures, and there's more, so you can please study this out on your own. As long as we remain under God's protection, an undeserved curse will not land on its intended victim. Proverbs 26.2, um, when enemies curse us, God will bless us. Psalm 109 verse 28 no curse pronounced against those whom God has blessed will prevail by those because they are blessed and I believe these are the scriptures that go with that numbers chapter 22 verse 12 23 verses 20 to 21 I believe those are the scriptures that go with that um but 
you know, there are times if you see something being passed down and you've done everything and you don't see it stopping, you know, um, you, you, you want to take authority over that and, and, you know, get the blessings that are for you. I mean, if you don't, healing was paid for too, well, why do Christians get sick? You know, why do they have, you know, surgery or this organ taken out or this cancer or whatever, but, but the price was paid, right? But we have to pray for these things. It's like God has provided everything for us in this great, big, wonderful, heavenly bank account. But we have to ask for him. We have to believe for him. We have to pray for him. Sometimes things have to be broken. If there's a generational curse, that's a generational curse. If something keeps happening, I don't care if it's alcoholism going down or cancer going down or a mental illness of going down, you know, and you see it over and over and over and over again, you need deliverance. Okay, if you can do it on your own just by praying or fasting or praying in the Holy Ghost, you know, you can do that or even do deliverance on yourself. This one preacher, he said, you recognize it, you repent of it. And if you didn't do it that you know of, just repent, say, of my ancestors. If they open the door, I shut it now. I put the blood of Jesus on it now and I break that curse. I know that that ran in my family. This one preacher says, he goes, I know this ran in my family until it ran into me. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? We need to use that, right? Okay, I love it. Um, okay, and you know what? Um, I think I'm going to end there. I probably will do another one because there's more on here I wanted to say, but I want to uh, not keep this and make it too long because um, on those areas, those specific areas, whether it's gambling, people can actually have a gambling habit where they will spend everything they have and then some and borrow and steal and whatever to get what they want. You know what I mean? Um, I think what else did we say this time? Gossip. Don't talk about people. You know, because people are going to talk about you. You lie about somebody, somebody's going to lie about you. And you know what? Remember this. Everything we do, whether good or bad, is like a seed planted. Okay? If you plant seeds of love and kindness and integrity, that's going to come back to you in a greater measure. You speak words to people and, and really nice, wonderful things. People are going to speak kindly of you as well. You know, and even more. You know, speak nice about two people. You have four or five or ten. Speak nice about you. But if you speak harshly about somebody else, or you lie about them, or you try to ruin them, or, you know, just lie about them, you know? Number one, God says not to cause discord among the brethren. In other words, don't try to make someone else not like somebody like or turn them against somebody that's causing discord among the brethren you're causing you know people to be angry at somebody because you're angry at them or you're you're talking about it because it's something you heard well that's called gossip we don't want to do that uh you know we are i think we already talked about that's what we're talking about gossip i heard this one girl say one time she says oh we're not gossiping we're just sharing no, you're gossiping, okay? And don't use prayer that you want to pray for them. Oh, we got to pray for so-and-so because oh, did you, this is what happened, you know? You know, be very, very careful about that. Or, you know, because you're going to say something that somebody else didn't know. And uh, we got to watch that, you know? Because sometimes we just want to talk. And uh, you got to be very, 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 very prayerful about spreading people's business, especially if it's not good. You don't want to change somebody's heart or mind about a person. Um, because, you know, think about this, guys. Every, or girls, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's a video I want to do about how cool it is to be a lady or a gentleman. You know, people have gotten so far off of, what is a lady? What is a gentleman? 
you know they're 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 not even knowing who they are or what they are anymore i want to do a video on just that and how cool it is to be either one of those you know not all this stuff in between or an animal or who knows what they're gonna think they are well one said she was a demon um but uh you know again if you talk against someone you know people are going to talk about you like let's say you 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 talk uh, something about somebody one person there's going to be several they're going to talk about you in a bad way or lie about you or try to ruin you with with words same thing you did it's a seed it all comes back whether good or bad and it comes back seeds grow and it'll come back in a greater measure so zip the lip <laughs> keep your mouth shut you know um, if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything I know y'all heard that <laughs> okay um, I want to pray you know if somebody is having any kind of addictions I want to pray that I'm gonna pray for you I'm gonna do it in a deliverance way because I am guessing you've probably tried anything I heard something recently about someone and they said you know oh I was doing so good and thought they had kicked that and uh, they don't know why but they did it again you know and obviously that's demonic when you when so, you're you're dealing with something in your life right now whoever you are and you can't stop and you've tried and tried and tried and you've tried everything we're gonna cast that demon out or you could stand in the gap for somebody else that you know is struggling could be drugs it could be alcohol could be uh, porn you know and I'm just naming some things that people deal with masturbation um, uh, lying uh, fornication stealing I mean things that you know are wrong but you can't stop you know and uh, that's demonic we're gonna cast that out you know maybe you can't stop with um, being depressed or something you know if you've, you've done everything you've taken everything you don't know what else to do anymore okay let's just cast that thing out and I'm just, all you got to do right now is just say whatever it is number one first let's get you saved and the Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 3 unless a man is born again he will not see the kingdom of heaven so we've got to get born again you know we all know about who Jesus is but it's just a matter of asking them into your heart, but meaning it. You know, really wanting to turn away and live for him now. You know, let's do it his way now. <laughs> so pray this with me. Just, you can repeat after me, or, or words out of your own heart, he knows. Father God, I come to you. I, I want to be your child. Forgive me for my sins. I know Jesus Christ died for me and rose again from the dead. I want to live for you. Help me. Show me how. I, I need you and I want to live for you. Help me to live for you. I give you my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. And now for anybody, again, you're struggling. Doesn't matter what it is. It could be a uh, hundred things. Whatever it is. You can't stop it on your own and you feel really bad when you do and you really you know you're not a failure you know it's a devil this we're gonna blame it on him I don't know it could be a generational curse or or you know let's just let's just pray okay um, no matter what if it's an addiction of any kind I would I would most definitely say it's demonic so let's just kick that devil out of your life out of your body out of your mind he can't live so just repeat after me and just say um, right now I recognize that I haven't been able to stop go ahead and say what it is okay and God um, I want you to help me deliver me I know that you will you're my deliverer the devil I tell you <laughs> get out of my life right now tell them get out I recognize you're there you know any guys anything that's causing you trouble torment fear 
sadness. These are these are of the enemy. It's not of God. So you can recognize it and call it what it is. Say, devil, you, you, you spirit of whatever it is, alcoholism, uh, smoking weed, masturbation, pornography, fornicate, whatever, say it. You can't live in my life anymore. Get out. I'm telling you to go and you have to go now. This is not your home anymore. You cannot live here. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to leave me now. If there's more than one, all of you go. Now you have to go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. You set them free by the power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you for that healing power, that delivering power in the name of Jesus, Lord, that whatever they need, we put the blood of Jesus Christ over them, over every generational curse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It stops here right now. Father, you said that it was finished at the cross. Whether you guys need it, somebody might even need um, a physical healing. You know, if there's something that you see passed down, something you cannot get rid of, and you have done everything. Right now, the blood of Jesus over whatever it is. Father God, I ask that you heal them. Whether it's physical, whether it's mental, I ask that you heal them. You are the healer. You are the deliverer. And the power in the name of Jesus sets them free right now. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Say it. I'm free. <laughs> whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You're free. Hallelujah. It's that simple. It's that easy. Don't let anybody tell you it's hard. Because it's not. And if by chance, you know, the enemy doesn't leave right away or, or <laughs> he's stubborn, whatever, do it again. But I would say for the most part, go for total freedom right now. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm excited for you. Um, if anybody ever has any questions or prayer requests, you can always leave them below. I'd be more than happy to pray for you or answer any questions, you know, if I can. Um, also, if, if you would like to give, you're welcome to do that too. You can give by Zelle. That's down there too. And I have a feeling I'm probably going to make another one about this being lukewarm. Um, and on, no, honestly, guys, it, it's just girls, ladies, gentlemen. <laughs> it's just so that we can just get on fire for God and, and not be lukewarm if we are. And so, Father, this is my last prayer. I'm just going to pray, Lord God, if we're lukewarm in any area of our life, Help us, Father God, to get stronger in you. Give us revelation from your word. Help us to do what it takes to get stronger. You know, you got to pray, worship, uh, read your Bible, pray in the Spirit. Oh, I definitely am making another video, and I will probably do that tomorrow because one of the ways to get stronger is by praying in the Spirit, by praying in tongues. So I do want to touch on that. Um, but... I just, just thank the Lord. Just, you know, say, Lord, I pray for everybody. Help us to get closer to you every day. And um, that's really all that I have to say for now. I just want to say God bless you. And may the name of the Lord Jesus Christ always be glorified in you. And Lord, help us to be strong and on fire for you. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Until next time.